Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the EcoStructure Machine Expert Training. I'm your host Leandro Omada and in this video we're going to talk about the task that we can create or modify in the software. So let's go to the presentation. So in the past, in the previous video, we had seen how we can create the different peer use. Okay, now what we need is to call this peer use and for that we require something called a task where in the task we can um, call the peer use. In this video, I'm going to explain the different tasks that we have in the software. So it's important to know this before calling the peer use. So if we go in this presentation, okay, this is the idea how the, the PLC works inside, okay? The PLC works in a, a, sky, in a sky cycle, okay? so. It first, what it does is to read the inputs from the models that we have. Then it enters into this uh, task processing that basically we have different tasks in the PLC and in the task we have our code. As you can see here, we have a different kind of task, okay? And inside the each task, we have a PUU, okay? Different PUU in each of them. So, the PLC first read something that you have in the input memory, okay, percentage I, we're going to cover that later, but then that information is going to be used in the peer use that we have in the different task. And then what the peer use does, what this um, PLC does is to write directly into the um, output that we have, okay. So then finish with some system processing, okay. So if we want to figure a low priority task and then it goes again, okay, into the cycle. So what it does is to, to have a rough idea, read the inputs, okay, make your code that you have in the peer reviews and then update the values that you have in the output, okay, and that is what the PLC does continuously, just to have a rough idea of how this works. So we continue with this, okay. In the PLC, we have um, an amount of tasks that we can call in the task monitor that we have, okay? And we also have, uh, depending on the PLC, we have a maximum number. Here you can see an example of the maximum number that we have for the PLCs. And now you can see here that we have different type of tasks that we're gonna cover later, okay? so. This is just a suggestion based on the manual that we have from each task has assigned a priority level. And it's divided by this, by control task that with this kind of priority. I also have the background task from this kind of priority. So on the configuration on the, on the task, we have the possibility to configure the priority. So the priority will allow the PLC to identify which PRU or which task has higher priority to be executed. Okay, so that's the idea basically. So you have two main ranges here. We have the controller task and the background task. That is something that you can configure on the uh, task manager. So if we continue with this. Okay, we have four main different types of tasks. We have the cycle task free willing task, event task, and external event task. This one shows, it was shown in here for each PLC, the amount of stuff that we can have for this, okay? So this value comes from the programming manual, okay? That you can find in the machine online help. Um, now, so when, when we work in the PLC, okay? I also mentioned the scan cycle. Okay, so if we are using this scan cycle, okay, we can define the cycle task and free willing task. And basically, the cycle task has a fixed time over here. You can see in this graphic, it has a fixed time. Okay, and the free willing task, the duration for this task, for the scan cycle of the read, the task processing, write up, and the system processing can it's going it's not going to be fixed because it will depend on the task that you have okay so 
imagine the the cycle time first imagine that you have configured this for um 50 milliseconds milliseconds okay so this is a fix okay and imagine that all this okay which is the task duration from read the input make the updates the uh, major code and then the update of the output it takes uh less than 10 milliseconds okay so the remaining time okay will be 40 seconds so this time will be empty okay nothing to do just waiting for the next start of the of the cycle okay then if we compare this with the freewheeling okay this task duration okay can vary depend on what you have in the code okay imagine that the first cycle it takes 10 milliseconds the other one 20 and the other 10 and then 40 this can vary and we will start the next sequence okay so you have the task duration this system process can be something fixed or not depending on what you have so this freewheeling as soon as the task finish it's going to start the other one it doesn't matter it doesn't have a fixed task okay so if that this freewheeling can cause also um a higher processor okay to have more processing information because you are constantly doing something okay constantly instead of having a fixed period then where you have for example a fixed period of 50 milliseconds and you are using only 10 milliseconds okay you are using only the 20 percent of that cycle doing something rather than constantly doing something in the middle okay so that's the main difference what i usually do is to use the cycle task okay it's much better to have to find a cycle task in the project okay where you know how is the ideal time where the task is going to be completed okay and it's also good for communication to have the cycle task the freewheeling is going to be used for another kind of features that we have in the plc that we're going to cover that later so continue with this we have the event task and external event task the event tasks are executed by boolean variables okay from variables inside our program okay and the external event task uh, are execution but something related to the external like something in the hardware that we can execute a, a task and in the task of course we're going to have POUs okay so this is a rough idea what we have for the uh, for the task now what we're going to do is to check how to add this task so in the task configuration okay inside the application tree we can find this task configuration that has more information once we are online we can see the execution of the different must or tasks that we have okay by default in the software we have this one called must we're going to cover that in a few minutes so in order to add a new task what we need to do is to right click over here okay add object and then you have the possibility to add the task another way to do this is to go into the task configuration just with the mouse and then click in the plus icon okay to see the task so once the task is added okay you can see in the top that you have the priority okay and the priority you can define the priority level that you have for the must for the task then you need to select the type and here you can see the different views that we have for the different kind of type okay if you are using cycle you can see here that you can specify the time for the for the cycle then if you use free wind there's nothing to configure it's just going to end the task the cycle and start another one again and here the event we can see that we can select a boolean variable we can select the variable over here but it's going to be boolean okay in order to trigger the task and execute the PUs. and the PUs are going to be called over here at the bottom okay something important that we must know is the watchdog okay we have the possibility is optional on this we can enable the watchdog for the task that we are going to have we need to define the time and sensitivity what does it mean so basically the watchdog is, is, is written over here but if we trigger that condition that 
the execution time that we have okay for the cycle time that we have defined here reach this value of the time the amount of time the well, amount of time that the cycle in order to finish reach this okay it's gonna trigger the watchdog and the plc is going to enter into hold so the idea is to configure the maximum time that you want the task to be executed okay in order to activate the watchdog so and the amount of time that the trigger that the task reach this number is called the sensitivity that we have okay that is the main idea so it's important to have it okay and it's important to watch the time that the that your cycle task is taking in order to avoid this kind of problem so the other thing that we need to check also is the hardware watchdog okay which is this one so basically we have um three conditions here to activate the the, um, the system watchdog okay we have the first one when the processor uh load is uh, more than 85 percent for more than three seconds and the control is going to hold state okay then the total execution of time priorities between 0 and 24 reaches the high percent of the processor resources for one more second that also goes into another condition for empty state okay and the other condition is the the lowest task of the system now executed during an interval of 10 seconds then a system is detected and then it goes into empty state so it's important to know this because if we don't care about the execution or the how much time our POU's task are executed in the cycle we're gonna cause a problem like this that the whole state okay but for a small application probably you don't have this but you will need to check it just to assign the right cycles time so if we go to the software now I'm going to show you this so by default we have this task configuration that we're going to be like the manager for the task that we have okay so here we just double click and we can see when we are online all the tasks that we have and the time the different times so the time that we can see here can allow us to configure the time cycle that we have on that must okay here we have another properties okay you can see here what we can do watch the time <laughs> we have all the information here so if we want to add a task we just click over here task or right click in the task configuration add option task here we can define the name new add here you have the priority level that you have side click even free willing here you have the possibility to change okay event here you can select a boolean you can see here the message the event must be a boolean variable freewheeling nothing to configure side click watchdog here you can configure the watchdog okay let's see and the sensibility so now we want to cover that um later okay but if you want to call a PU, just add call and you can go into the program and easily see all the POUs as program that you have in the application okay or another one the easy one drag the POU that you have drag and drop it into the must or in the POU that you have and that's it that's all okay but we're gonna cover that later because there are another functionalities that I want to show you there they are quite good so um, this is it for the Tasks, different tasks that we have in the software we're going to cover more functionalities later when we are online with the plc but i just want you to get started with the task just to have a rough idea uh what is that in the machine expert so thank you very much for watching this video and i see you on the next one